Good morning, Convent family. And welcome to Convent Avenue Baptist Church General Sunday School, where our pastor, the Reverend Jesse T. Williams, Jr., the head of our Christian education ministry is the Reverend Dr. Charlene Faison, and our superintendent is Mr. Ron Smith. We are happy to be with you this morning. Our teachers for this morning are Sister Virginia Chapman. Hi, good morning. Reverend Brenda Price. Good morning. And myself, Nadine Wiggins. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord God, we love you, Lord God. We praise your holy name, Lord God, because there's none other before you, Lord God. Lord God, we are inviting you, Father, into this Sunday school lesson, Lord God. And we're asking you, Lord God, to open up the hearts, open up the minds, open up the ears, Lord God, of your people, Lord God. So what comes out of this lesson, Lord God, that they will be able to apply it to their lives. Help us, Lord God, the teachers of this lesson, to be able to bring forth this lesson in the way, Lord God, that you want us to bring it forth. Mm -hmm. We call on you, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this is the third week of the quarter. And our um, this, this it is titled, Prophets Faithful to God's Covenant. And in particular, we've been looking, we're going to look, we've looked at three prophets already. It's a total of four prophets. And the three prophets we looked at was Moses. Joshua, Huldah, we're going to talk about her today, and the last prophet is uh, Elijah. And they were all pre exalic prophets who represented God. So I'm going to share my screen right now. So, so our Sunday school spring quarter, like I said, is the prophets faithful to God's covenant. And today we're going to talk about Huldah, the prophet of wisdom. So the definition, definition of a prophet. Um, a prophet is one who speaks to the people of God and their enemies on behalf of God. The prophet's message may speak to the past, present, and or future relationship of God with God's people. And a prophet's message is meant to effect change spiritually, socially, culturally, emotionally, and politically. Mm -hmm. And we discussed also some characteristics of a prophet. Uh, a prophet has a prayer life. A prophet um, is in communication with the Lord. A prophet hears the voice of the Lord and speaks what they have heard from the Lord to a selected people as directed by God. A prophet obeys God. A prophet is humble. A prophet loves God. A prophet loves God's people. Uh, a prophet is committed to God, has integrity, and trusts God and can foretell the future. So, so far we looked at Moses and we saw that Moses, you know, had these characteristics um, as a prophet. And last week we looked at Joshua and Joshua proved his faithfulness to God through his obedience to God's exact plan. His trust, and faith in God allowed him to believe that what seemed impossible was possible with God. You see, he had a relationship with God. He had witnessed God's miracles and he loved God. And that's the commandment. And so Joshua's love um, for Moses, his love for Israel, and God provided the motivation for him to conquer um, to be one of the greatest conquerors. 
And if we look at the commission, it's like through his love and trust in God, Joshua was able to motivate the Israelites to go, go into the promised land and conquer the land um, for God, that God promised the Israelites. So just a brief um, um, review of the background of today's lesson. Well, the United Kingdom uh, of Israel was split into two kingdoms after the death of Solomon. The North had 20 evil kings. Every one was evil. And hmm. God sent them four prophets he, to warn them. He sent them Elijah. He sent them Elisha, he sent them Amos, and he sent them Hosea, but to no avail. Their continuous disobedience and violation of the first six commandments um, led to their destruction and captivity. And on the other hand, um, Judah, which was in the South, had um, eight good, they had 20 kings too, but at least eight of them were good kings and 12 were evil. And God also sent them um, eight prophets. He sent them Obadiah, Joel, Isaiah, Micah, Nahum, um, Zephaniah, Jeremiah, and Habakkuk. God delayed their captivity because of these good kings, but you know, they have more bad kings than they have more evil kings that were worshiping idols. But there was one king that we're gonna look at today and his name is Josiah. Josiah was one of the obedient kings just as his great grandfather, Hezekiah. But his grandfather, Manasseh, and his father, Amos, were evil, evil kings. In 2 Kings 22, we learned that Josiah became king at the age of eight. And if we look at today's, you know, look at modern times, he was a third grader. But we see the power of God and how God moved in this eight-year-old child to be the king over an entire nation. Ooh, we serve an awesome God. Mm -hmm. But yes. in, spite of jo in spite of all Josiah did, Josiah did, he tried to correct all the wrong that his, um, that his, that his father and grandfather did but in spite of him trying to, um, you know, correct all the wrong that, is, that they create, created, Huldah, the prophet, had a hard message to relate to him from God. So the question for you is, what do you do when you get bad news? And the second question is, what do you do when you have to give bad news, Reverend Price? Well, I think the first question, and I changed my uh, answer a couple of times. Uh -huh. The first time I hear bad news, I don't hear bad news. I, I'm just going to close my ears and act like it didn't happen yeah. until the initial shock can uh, wear off. Uh-huh. That was a shock. <laughs> uh, and uh, my, uh, after the my shock mom. went off, uh, then I, I, I tried to uh, start to uh, uh, figure out what can I do at this point mm -hmm. uh, uh, to uh, uh, not so much to deal with the bad news, but to see if I can change the bad news. Mm -hmm. But at some point, um, I have to accept the bad news. So it, it's the shock, it's the denial, and then finally the acceptance of it. Yeah, I, I think I, when I get bad news, um, I, I sort of, you know, um, I think my initial response is, cause I'm a, you know, I get emotional, right? So mm -hmm. I'll start, I'll cry. Uh, usually, I mean, of course, it, you know, it just takes, overwhelms me emotionally. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, then after, you know, that, uh, that initial emotion um, wears off, you know, then I try to look to the Lord 
And I'm like, God, you know, this is something that I can't handle, Lord God. Help me put this in your hands. You know, just, just help me, Lord, because I can't. I can't deal with it. So that's usually what I do. Virginia? Yeah. I was thinking as you were speaking that uh, bad news is never easy for anyone. Mm -hmm. And when I get bad news, I sometimes go into denial and almost pretend that I didn't get it because the pain of it is too, too difficult to handle. Yeah. So it's at that point that I realize that if I'm going to get through this, I'm going to have to let God handle it. Amen. And that takes sometimes a few days. It's not like instant food. <laughs> right, right. But uh, that's where I try to get from the shock, the disbelief, the fear, and all that goes with it to the place where I'm willing to say, God, I understand fully that the battle is yours. I can't handle it. Yeah. Well, give me some direction. Okay. So the second question is, what do you do when you have to give bad news? And you guys can write your responses to these questions in the chat too. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Virginia? How do you feel about giving bad news? That's difficult too, because very often I get in my mind um, a profile. They just lost their job. Something mm -hmm. else just happened. And now this... So you worry about how the news will affect the person. Mm -hmm. Too early to call. All those kinds of things come to your mind. So um, yeah, I almost immediately jump into the space of the person whom I'm going to hear, who will be giving, given the bad news to a place where I say, God, please help me to be very present. Mm -hmm to allow that person to express whatever sadness or fear or whatever goes on and patiently listen and then pray. Amen. And Reverend Price, how you would, would uh, give me that news? Well, first of all, I don't want to give bad news. I, 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 you know, you want to bring people good news to make them feel good, True. but, uh, there are some times where in, uh, in person or on the phone or across the pulpit, I have to give bad news. And uh, like you said, Virginia, a part of it is what's the profile, who are these people? And I try not to delay it too long. Mm -hmm. That some people, they're just talking, talking, talking until finally, and they break and say, "Get yeah, tell me. Right. And I usually try to give it, uh, the person uh, as, as directly as possible, but then try to uh, be there for the aftermath, not just drop it and run off, but be there to see, uh, mm -hmm. to at least stand there so they're not alone when they get their bad news. Yeah. I know. I mean, I think it just just brought to my mind. Um, I remember when I was, you know, working, and one of the policies that um, that we had at work was that, you know, if 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 a person has to be terminated, you don't tell them until after five. And it, that just used to bother me because I mean, this person worked all day, you know. I mean, and at the end of the day is when you, you know they wanted you. I think they they believe because there would be some type of retaliation. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, so they wanted you to wait till, till at the end. But like you, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't want, like to beat around the bush. You know, I like to be direct with people and I want to be there to give support in any way that I can. Once the news, once the bad news is, is given, you know, um, and just try to be a support for that person during that time. But that's, those are the questions. 
And we're going to yeah. hear from we <laughs> Sometimes uh, bad news happens. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, no matter what you do, that sometimes bad news happens. Yeah. And when we look at our lesson today, that's exactly what's going on. That bad mm -hmm. news has come to the kingdom of Judah. And in particular, it has come to the king of Judah at that time, Josiah. Uh, the, uh, Josiah, as you said, was a, uh, a young king who, despite his uh, grandparents uh, and a father, turned his heart to the Lord and was committed to the things of the Lord. Uh, that he was doing good. And yet the evil that was around them literally overtook the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and so here we see a prophet coming to give Judah bad news, mainly because of the moral and religious decay of the country, God was going to destroy the kingdom that he actually built up. Mm -hmm. God doesn't forget but God does keep God's word. We want God to always do good regardless of what we do, mm -hmm. but there are consequences for our action. Mm -hmm. And this is what has happened with uh, the kingdom of uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. The Northern kingdom had already fallen a hundred and some odd years before. And now it's Judah's turn that they're getting ready to also fall because of their breaking of the commandment. In particular, commandment number one, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at Exodus chapter 20 and verse three, it says very distinctly that God says, you shall not have any other God before me. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say, you will not make any idol to yeah. any God or worship them. And this is exactly what the people of Israel and Ju Judah had done. They had made idols and they were so bold as they actually put the idol right into the temple of God. And so at this point, God is angry and God didn't just sit there on it, but God sent his prophet to let them know, I'm angry, you have broken your covenant with me and so I'm going to tear the kingdom down. Mm -hmm. But what we look at when we look at King Josiah and uh, uh, the prophet uh, Holder is how people of God act. When we look at the characteristics of the prophet, there are uh, a couple of ones in particular we will look at today. The fact that uh, the uh, King Josiah and prophet or prophetess holder, they had integrity, that they trusted God and that they uh, uh, acted based on what uh, um, they uh, heard from God. I, I think those three will stop there, that despite the shock in the initial reaction that they sought the Lord through prayer and reading the word. They trusted God enough to listen for God's direction. And then they acted with an integrity. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of the characteristics of the prophet is also found in the people of God. Okay. So uh, in our lesson, Second Kings, uh, chapter 22, uh, verses 11 through 13, while it is not mentioned in your Sunday school book, I want us to read it so that we can get a feel for what is happening. In the Old Testament, 2 Kings, chapter 22, verses uh, 11 through 13. And it reads in the New Living Translation or the NLT, when the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in despair. 
Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Hilkiah, son of Shaphan, Achbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the court secretary, and Isaiah, the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all of Judah. Inquire about the words written in this scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger is burning against us because of our ancestors, because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this world. We have not been doing everything it says we must do. Second King chapter 22, 11 through 13. So King Josiah and his uh, a zeal for the Lord started a renovation profit uh, uh, project on the temple, that temple of Solomon, that glorious place had fallen into disrepair. And so uh, he had uh, the money collected to actually go for the work and then uh, renovating and rehabbing the temple they found one of the scrolls of the Bible. They believe it was uh, Deuteronomy. And what uh, uh, the priest Hokiah uh, found, he gave it to the court secretary who read it to the king. And it basically reiterated the covenant or the contract between God and the people of Israel. And in reading it, Josiah realized that they had broken every single part of the covenant. And so it explained why God was angry with the people. And it also explained that destruction was coming, not because God was on a whim or a fancy, but because the people had broken uh, the law of God. Mm -hmm. So we see the first thing that this man of God did when he got bad news. He was sorrowful. He was in despair. Yeah. And he repented. Mm -hmm. And then what he did was what? He sought the Lord. He heard the word of God because the priest read it to him. But now he said, go seek the Lord. In other words, he trusted the Lord enough so that he knew if he sought the Lord, God would give him direction what to do next. Yeah. And that's a lesson for us. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, find in verses 14 through, 16, uh, uh, through the end, and also in chapter 23, that despite the bad news, Josiah still acts with integrity. That he got bad news and he can say, well, it's over. They're gonna destroy the kingdom and I can do what I want. No, he acted in integrity. He stayed true to his faith and true to his God. Mm -hmm. Acting on that commandment that despite situation, he loved the Lord with all his heart, his mind, and his soul. Amen. But let's look at Holder. Now, Holder, that we're going to read in uh, chapter 22, verses 14 through 20, was a prophet or a prophetess. Because they called her a prophetess, it's not to say that she was less than a male prophet, but the uh, language use of the time, that that's how they indicated that Hulda was female, mm. but she was still a prophet, a woman of God who was going to give the word of God. So I'm gonna ask uh, Sister Nadine and, and Sister Virginia, if they would take those verses 14 through 20 and read them to us. Okay. I'm going to read verses um, 14 through 17, and um, Sister Virginia will read the rest. And it reads, so, so, Hel so Helkiah, the priest, 
A. Hakam, Akbar, Shafton, and Isaiah went to the new quarter of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Hulda. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, son of Hoshhas, the keeper of the temple wardrobes. She said to them, the Lord, the God of Israel has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the words written in the scrolls that the king of Judah had read will come true. For my people have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to pagan gods. And I am very angry with them and everything they have done. My anger will burn against this place and it will not be quenched. Amen. Verses 18 through 20. But go to the king of Judah who sent you. Seek the Lord and tell them, this is what the, Lord, the God of Israel concerning the message will bring that you have heard. You were sorry and humbled yourself before the Lord. God, when, when you heard, I'm having a little difficulty seeing this somehow. What I said. Please. I'll read yeah, it. Yeah, what I'll I said against this city mm -hmm. and its people that this land would be cursed and become desolate. You tore your clothes in despair and wept before me in repentance. And I indeed heard you, says the Lord. 20. Yes, so oh, I will not send the promised disaster until after you have died and been buried in peace. You will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this city. So they took the message back to the king. Amen. Amen. Hold the, the prophetess, as many prophets before her and after her, had to give bad news. And one of the characteristics I believe a prophet has is that they trust God and they uh, have a certain amount of boldness and courage to go and tell a king that your kingdom is coming down and you're going to die that she could have decided like many of the false prophets or the wishy want false ones that were there, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell him. But Holder, and they believe the name may have meant uh, weasel, or that's what they called her in that day, that the name was called uh, um, Holder, was also weasel. Chances are they called it to her because they didn't like the fact that the prophet of God probably calls them on their sin, mm -hmm. that when they were not doing right, she let them know. And here's another example where that prophet, that woman of God had to make a decision. Do I tell it like it is or do I uh, lie? Do I abridge it? What do I do? I butter it up. Remember, or... we said, huh? I said, she said, do, should I butter it up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well, wait you a know. minute. She says, and go and tell the man who sent you. She was bold, right? She said, go and tell that man yeah. who sent you. Mm -hmm. Didn't even mention his name. Didn't mm -hmm. even acknowledge him as king. I mean, when you talk to God all the time, which is true power, Talking to some of these people on earth, they don't know what power is. 
and they don't deserve our fear. Mm -hmm. But God is all powerful yes. and Holda trusted her yes. life in his hands and we need to trust God. I'm not gonna do your part, Virginia, okay. And mm -hmm. so we see she had integrity. Yes. That she was true to her role of telling what she heard from God, because that's what it said in uh, Fort P, right? Yeah. That she had talked to the Lord and she said, the Lord has spoken and I'm telling you what he said. Mm -hmm. So she keeping her integrity despite the circumstances. She is bold and courageous. She's going to speak the truth, even if nobody wants to hear it. And then she's going to trust the Lord. We also see Holder in the role of prophet for telling the future. Mm -hmm. She said two things about the future. One, that yeah, God, as he said, is going to destroy the Jerusalem where he has set his heart. But she also said this because of the mercy of God for his people who love him and trust him, that Josiah, you will not, well, she doesn't mention him by name, but go tell the king of Judah, you won't see what happened because you were willing to be faithful. You were repenting. And therefore, I'm going to wait till you die, the Lord said, and then I'll destroy the kingdom. Mm, mm. It was bad news. And Josiah was a man of integrity because as I said before, he could have said, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to party, let the party start. <laughs> I know that's right. But what he did was he could, hey, but he continued to have a spiritual revival in the country, yes. even though disaster had uh, uh, come on them. He still said, I want to make sure all of these idols are out of here. Yes. And yes, that's yes. what he did. He didn't just take them out of the temple in Jerusalem. He took them in all the highways and yes. byways that they had set up the idols, the shrines, the places of, of, of idol worship. Mm -hmm. He even went into the old country where they had fallen and he had taken the idols out of there. Yes. And then he said, we're going to have Passover. Uh -huh. Like y'all have never seen it before. Yes. Even though the kingdom was falling and he had a death sentence on his head, he still loved the Lord with all his heart, all yes. his mind, and all his soul. And he still did what was right. Mm -hmm. What about us? What do we do when we get bad news? Hold the kept her integrity. She trusted the Lord and she spoke what God said to speak. Josiah got bad news. He sought the Lord's face like we need to do. And then we need to pray, read the word of God, listen for God's direction, and then act with integrity. That's my take on it. What about you, Virginia? Well, I certainly would say the same thing really because I think the message that uh, this whole story uh, brings to our hearts and, and memory hopefully whenever we think of the prophet Holder we'll think and Josiah will think of what God requires of us. We're living in an age now where uh, people are bombarding us with their opinions. And the reality of the, of the matter is that everybody's opinion is right because it's their opinion. Mm. But God is asking us not to go by opinions, but to go by his word. Yes. And yes. I see in this um, uh, account of Josiah, also a man, as we've mentioned before, and Nadine, he was a man of integrity. And God is asking us when we want to follow him to be people of integrity. Yes. To speak yes. the truth in love, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. follow it, just as he said, because as the word tells us, if we don't follow God's word 
God's way, there are consequences. Yep. The Bible teaches us also that um, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we think in terms of what is happening in our world today, I think it's very important for us to realize that even though we are bombarded with many roads, many opinions, that our first resource, our first source of information should be God's word. Amen. And I remember um, something that my mother said to us as we were growing teenagers. She said, you girls are gonna have to remember something. This word is something you will always need. And mm. this word is something that if you don't have it, it will make a big, big difference in your life. And so um, that advice I think can come to all of us. Yes. God's word is the measure by which, the standard by which we live our lives regardless of what else is going on. And then I uh, remembered Psalm, the first Psalm uh, one, that blessed is the man who, stand, who walketh not in the way of sinners, no standeth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly will not stand in the judgment nor sin. Um, therefore, help me with the end of it. No, sin is in congregation of the um, righteous of no sooner than the congregation of the righteous thank you reverend price but i think <laughs> get my drift yes and it's established from the bible the word of god which encourages us to make his word the treasure that we keep if someone would say to you uh one of the most um, treasured things you have in your home one of them should be the Bible. Yes. In terms of how we manage our lives. Since the Bible is so important, and since it is such a treasure, it seems to me that we need to spend more time reading it daily so that we can know what to do and how to do it and mm. we need God's guidance and his help, especially, especially in times like these. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Virginia Chapman. We're gonna, um, you're gonna pray us out and then I'm gonna read the Lenten emphasis, amen? Our Father, how we thank you for your word. You have said that heaven and earth shall pass away but your word shall last forever yes you have promised us lord that your word shall be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path in these days when there's so much going on in our world that would move our, our lives in different directions we're wondering which way to go oh god Help us to hold fast to your word. Help us to love your word and follow your word. Oh, yes. Father. Because you have told us, oh God, that if we follow your word, our lives will make it be made whole. Yes. Our, our situations in our lives will be healed. Yes, Lord. That you will give us direction for all that we need now and throughout eternity. Yes. Once again, oh God, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God. We praise you for who you are. Yes, In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So this is the fifth week of Lenten, and I'm going to read our Lenten study. Um, from 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it challenges us regarding our commitment to learn God's word and our abil ability to share it. And reading from the Amplified Bible, Verse 15 states, study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trials who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. In the Great Commission, Jesus instructs all of us to share God's word. And we see that in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20, again, in the Amplified Bible. And it says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, help the people to learn, um, to learn of me, believe in me and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstances and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. Taken together, these scriptures present um, inescapable truth that should prick our hearts and compel us to action. Bible study and learning God's word should be a, a, a priority, as um, Sister as Sister Chapman just told us. And in Romans 10 confirms a fact that should give us pause. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for the for Israel is for their salvation. But I testify about them that they have a certain enthusiasm for God, but not in accordance with correct and vital knowledge about him and his purpose. For not knowing about God's righteousness, which is based on faith, and seeking to establish their own righteousness based on works, they did not, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And that, that, again, that's from the Amplified Bible. So during Lent, especially, but really always, and in our enthusiasm for God should align with our knowledge of God. Our salvation is through believing faith in Jesus Christ and knowing this should fill our hearts with confidence because of his holy living as the example towards which we should strive, the righteous blood he shed for our sins and his triumphant resurrection from the grave as proof of his power to offer eternal life. This knowledge both informs and, and confirms we can only achieve the standard he set by learning more about him. Study is the key to being like Christ. Let's agree today to commit ourselves to serious personal study of God's word, to attend as we can church-wide Bible study and Sunday church, Sunday church school, and to, and to total dependence on the living word of God, Jesus, our resurrected Christ. And this was submitted by brother Ronald T. Smith from our Sunday school. Um, he's, our Sunday, he's our Sunday church school general superintendent. And he's the co-chair of class A9 men's class and fellowship. So amen, that ends amen. that. Amen. See you next so week. So we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Uh, our lesson will be Elijah, Prophet of Courage. 
And the Bible reading will be 1 Kings. We're going to go back a little bit. 1 Kings chapters 18 and 19. And the corresponding uh, verse would be Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 3. God bless you and keep strong in the Lord. Amen. 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 Bye. Goodbye.